Good morning, John. I'm Mike Scott. I am the chairman of the Collington Tunnel Mural Project, but I'm more frequently known as the Chief Dafty. In uh -huh. other words, I'm the silly person who came up with the idea of creating the mural. Fantastic. And we're going to we're going to go see the mural in just a moment. Uh, but I'm going to swing the camera around and get a, a quick introduction here. Hi. Uh, I'm Emilia Hanna. I'm the head of the National Cycle Network program for Sustrans Scotland. Um, so we have a, a vision for a, a, a network of uh, walking and cycling paths the whole way across the UK and we're looking after that vision here in Scotland. So we're custodians of the National Cycle Network, um, just trying to connect towns and cities together by active travel to support healthier and happier lives. So yeah, really happy to be here this morning. Yeah, I love it, love it. And, and of course, you are here on the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman and fittingly, we're meeting on a trail. <laughs> talk, talk a little bit about this uh, this location, the Collington Station. Is there anything significant about this? This is part of an old railway line mm -hmm. that was set up in 1874 to look after the needs of mills that were water powered by the river that runs along behind me. Okay. There were 74 of them. Electricity hadn't been invented, so they needed water power to make the mills work. The only transport they had at the time was horses and carts and the mill owners wanted a railway to take goods in, goods out. So that was built and opened in 1874, mm -hmm. and the tunnel that we're going to go through is the only tunnel on that railway line, and uh, is 140 metres long, and interesting, as you will see. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And Amelia, um, this is, you mentioned it earlier, part of the Cycle Network uh, 75. I think I saw a, a wee bit of, of that up in the city itself, Edinburgh. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know, this uh, significance of this particular trail that we see here yeah, uh, so, and all that. Yeah, yeah, this is a really important commuter connection. So mm -hmm. we've got Collington right here and this goes all the way along to the Union Canal, which then you can cycle to get right into the heart of Edinburgh city centre. Um, so routes like these uh, provide a really great way, safe from traffic, for people to walk or cycle or, or wheel into town. Um, and that's really what we're all about uh, at Sustrans Scotland. We've got 1,620 miles of national cycle network across uh, the country, well, across Scotland, I should say. Um, not all of it is as good quality or as special as this particular bit, but we're working hard to try to get it as accessible and uh, as easy to use for everybody in Scotland. Fantastic. Well, let's take a stroll down and check it out. Sure. All right. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful, you know, strolling along here this morning, uh, or excuse me, I was rolling, but I saw lots of people strolling along through here, walking their doggies. Uh, uh, you had mentioned, Amelia, a commuter route. I saw plenty of people going to work, as well as, uh, you know, it, it looked like a, a couple of uh, parents, you know, with their kids, that's maybe right. getting off to school. I, that's, that's what these are all about, right? Is Absolutely. being able to connect people to meaningful destinations. Yeah, that's absolutely it. Yeah. yeah, and it's a multi-purpose too, yeah. Because out there behind us, we've got Harriet Watt University. And uh -huh. A lot of people who work there commute by bike or yeah. who study there. We've got mums, dads and kids coming along on the way to school and nursery. As you say, we've got runners, walkers, yeah. cyclists, dog walkers. We've got a lot coming up and down here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to try to keep my periphery open too, because we might have some uh, commuters coming up behind oh, us absolutely. as well. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, and you know, as you just mentioned, it's so incredibly important to have that spirit of it being multi-use. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, places like this are exactly the reason why I fell in love with, with cycling. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you come here because you feel peaceful, uh, you've got the birds uh, chirping, you've got the, the river, the water of Leith just down there and all of the nature. So what better place to be? Um, to get from your A to B. It's just so such a more pleasant experience than being caught in traffic. And so, yeah. as well as getting us from A to B, it's just supporting people to, to enjoy the outdoors, to spend time outdoors. And that is so, so, so important in, yeah. in this day and age. <laughs> okay, so now we're approaching the, the tunnel here. Let's, uh, let's uh, pause just a moment. And you tell us a little bit about uh, the story. This is actually, about active travel meeting economics, mm -hmm. which is an interesting take perhaps. Back in 2016, the Royal Bank of Scotland and the Bank of Scotland started closing local bank branches. 
Mm -hmm. And they did that all the way up this river, all the way across Scotland, in fact. So communities were left without banks. Now, when you lose banks, you lose businesses. So our village and the other villages ended up with no shops. We couldn't buy a pint of milk or a newspaper or a loaf of bread without getting in the car. Crazy. So my idea was how do we get more people to come to the village, mm -hmm. to get more footfall, to keep the shops going and bring new shops. Yeah. So that's where the crazy idea was born. Yeah. Um, it was bringing people to Collington. And we had this railway tunnel. Now at the time, it was black. The lighting was nothing like you see now. Mm -hmm. It was scary. People on their own actually often wouldn't go through it because you look, you can't mm -hmm. see the other end. Right. And that is scary. So it was a crazy idea to pick up on the history of our community, the history of the railway that used to run along here, and create something that brought people here, but instead of making them feel threatened, made them feel happy, made them smile, but brought them out of the houses to get them here in the first place. Right. So that's the crazy idea. And the whole mural is Scotland's largest historic or heritage mural. It's 140 metres long in the tunnel, another 17 metres at the other end of the tunnel, two of Sustrans people on the wall at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, and the key thing is that we wouldn't have got started on this without Sustrans Art Roots Fund taking a real big leap of faith and saying, he looks daft, but maybe he's going to do something that matters. Yeah. And that's where it came from. Yeah. Well, I want to get to the root of the matter in terms of where it came from. Have you ever done anything else like this before? No. Um, <laughs> I'm not an artist. I'm a, a, by, by career, I'm a, a, a Royal Air Force officer, uh -huh. a manager, and a management consultant. Yeah. Um, but I do come up with stupid ideas. Um, and this is one of them. And the, the trick is, if you like to use the management skills yeah. to bring good people together, to talk to people who can fund you, yeah. to set up a charity that can actually get tax relief, you know, to do all the things that happen to make it work, and then to find artists. And we went and talked to muralists all over Scotland, in fact, by email all over the world. Yeah. And people went, no. Nobody's ever done anything like that. Yeah. But we found the one guy who said, yeah, I think I could do that. So okay. we got an art team together and it's a mixture of classical mural technique and street art. Okay. And as you'll see when we go through, the left-hand side of the tunnel is a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay. Um, his granddad was the church minister here in Collington for 30 years. Ah. And so it was good to pick up on that he also wrote a wee poem in 1885 called From a Railway Carriage. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that poem as we go through. But it is 16 lines long and it describes a child coming out of Edinburgh, perhaps for the first time on a railway train. Mm -hmm. And the excitement of moving from a smoky, black, dirty city to this green, beautiful countryside. Yeah. And you can imagine the excitement a kid would have when they've not had that experience. Robert Louis Stevenson summed it up in 16 lines of posh word onomatopoeia. It right. goes clickety-clack, 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 like a railway train would have done. Right. Um, and that's the spine. Each line of the poetry we put on the left wall, on the right wall we put images of our community's heritage and history, and a load of other really silly things. And yeah. you'll see loads of people. Yeah. They're all real people. They all live in the community, or they've all got connections with the community. and. It kind of grew from there um, with a good art team and a good team of trustees working together. It took us just under two years, and that was including COVID. Fantastic. Okay, and so uh, it was done uh, as a, when was the grand opening, the ribbon cutting? There never was one. Okay. Uh, we, when we, was it done? It's, it's not really done, John. Okay. Um, we have got a plaque on the wall over there mm -hmm. that says we completed it in 2021. Okay. But okay. we didn't really because we deliberately left blank spaces. We sure. keep adding to it. We keep maintaining it because this tunnel's got an active microclimate. Right, yeah. Um, you'll see water running down the walls in places. So our process of maintenance is constant. Yeah. But also we want to keep adding to it because if, if you want to keep people interested, give them a reason to come yeah. back to active travel, 
give them something new to look at. And people say to us, really every good time point. I come, yes. Yes. there's something new. Really um, good point. And uh, so 2021 was the uh, approximate completion date, you know, yeah, with, with, with some wiggle room in yeah, there yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, when, when did it actually start? When did some of the first paintings and... First and, paint yeah. went on in June 2018. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. And from there we did workshops at four schools mm -hmm. because having young people invested in it is really important. Yeah. 600 kids um, have hands on this mural. That means 600 families are stakeholders. That means 600 lots of friends yeah. uh, are also protecting it for us. Yeah. We also went to local art groups, average age even older than me. Yeah. Uh, and so they've got an investment in it as well. And lots of other local people had hands on. Um, 2018 through to 2021, as you know, COVID came along in the middle of that. Right. Yeah. So we had to keep stopping and starting. We also, you can't paint in a tunnel like this in the middle of winter. Uh, Your hands yeah. fall off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was stop, start, stop, start. And I'm still amazed that we did this in the time that we did. Fantastic. Brilliant. Let's go check it out. Shall I tell you how much it cost? Yeah, please do. We raised a hundred thousand pounds altogether, and of that, a third came from people in the local community. Yeah. Which I think is quite amazing, and again, is part of this thing about how you protect it is by having local people as stakeholders. Yeah. A vested interest in it as Absolutely. well. Yeah. It's not a hand-me-down from somebody else. Mm, nope. They've, you know, not only do they have this sweat equity in it in yeah. terms of working on it, but yeah, they, they, they got have their money that. in it too. Yeah. And it's been so successful that we've got a tunnel through an alleyway in the west of Scotland where mm -hmm. Robert Burns was born. We've been advising them for two years. Okay. They're also funded a bit by uh, Sastrans. And most recently, Cork in Ireland have got a huge railway tunnel. Uh -huh. um, and they want to make that as a route to divert traffic from the surface underground. Mm -hmm. Sorry, when I say traffic, riding, wheeling, sure. walking. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's great that we can be an exemplar and an advisor to other people because we've made all the mistakes that could be made. Yeah. Because yeah. we learned the hard way and we can pass that experience on. I'm glad you sort of, you know, pointed that out too of, you know, sort of enumerating the different ways that people can use these active uh, transportation corridors as mobility corridors. It, you know, it's walking, yes, it's biking, but it's also incredibly important for people in wheelchairs and other mobility devices, gives them the opportunity yeah. to connect to meaningful places yeah. too. And that's one of the great things about the new surface here. Yeah. The previous surface, if you were in a wheelchair, yes, you could get here. Yeah. But it was hard work. Yeah. Now, it's great. Yeah. It really is. So, you know, all yeah. these things are important, John. Yeah, they sure are. Yeah. Okay. Shall we? Shall we? All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Right, so you've got the poem on the left, which yeah. goes faster than fairies, faster than witches. I'll just stop here for one second, if I may, yeah, yeah. because uh, I don't, are you married, John? I have a, a partner. Okay. We've been together uh, for about 15 years or so. Right, well, there are very few people who are stupid enough to have their wife painted as a witch, but that is my wife. <laughs> uh, and I am still married. <laughs> Does she get a good chuckle out of it? When she saw it as it was being painted, yeah. She said, well, I want earrings. So she got earrings. They were random design. I then had to go and have some made yeah. to match the mural. Yeah. And she then said, yes, but my hair doesn't look right. I want some streaks. So <laughs> on we went. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so this is the great thing. You can have fun. I mean, our lead muralist, Chris, that's his partner, Luby, riding a mighty, mighty, look at it, I mean, look at it, you know, the unicorn. Yeah. So that's emblematic of Scotland as well, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, as I say, all the people you'll see are real, and every line of poetry, uh, maybe I can explain a line of poetry further down as we go. We're not going to spend all day talking yeah, about yeah, it, because yeah. I know you've got a load of things to do. I think Amelia's got, got my book solid, right? Oh, yeah, we've got <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I have a 3.30 train, so <laughs> okay, you have a four, right? right? Let's go. Yeah. I've got a train to London as well. But yeah, well, if, yeah. we, if we pause here for a moment. Yeah, yeah. This is the line of poetry that Robert Louis Stevenson said. It okay. goes charging along like troops in a battle. Yeah. So it's a good example of how we've used the poem, because we've used each line of the poem a little bit like a coat hook. Mm -hmm. And so we've had our street artists write the line of poetry, and then hooked onto that, 
all the concepts that we want to bring out. So, charging along like troops in a battle. You can see here a field of poppies, right. which is very much reflecting all those who gave their lives in various conflicts over the years. You can see up there the badges of army regiments. This is a village that has the army based in it, and those are every regiment that's been based here since 1919. Ah, I see what you mean in terms of we've got the, the poem on this side, yeah. and then on this side is the, the things story. that are the story that's yeah. relevant to the yeah. actual village. Scottish history, there is a, a time called the Covenanters. That's the Covenanters Memorial over there. Mm -hmm. This big guy behind you is actually a real piper. His name is Ross Munro. He teaches piping at the Army School of Bagpiping here in Collington. Um, and finally, on the left there, you've got a, a train set in World War I, taking troops off to the front from the barracks here in Collington. So you've got this whole story yeah. built around one single line of poetry. But you'll see it goes right up over the roof. We don't miss a bit out. We like to make the whole thing pretty complete. And then you've got little spot illustrations like that magpie there, which was painted by the people from Pentland Art Club, average age 80 plus. It's so lovely. that's the way it works. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense. And you'll see that for Absolutely every brilliant. line of poetry. Poetry, pictures. Yeah. And going back to what I said outside, you'll see we've got a nice empty bit here. Yeah, yeah. That we'll be beginning to do some filling on in July. We Fantastic. do an annual maintenance and addition bit in July. In July, yeah. We actually wash the whole mural as well, which, yeah, yeah. which needs it because, you know, everything like bikes, for example, do sure. throw up mud spray. A little bit, um, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to keep it clean, keep it bright, yeah. keep it looked after. Yeah. And I did uh, see a couple of drips uh, oh. coming down uh, over there. So, yeah, you, you're right. It's It's got its own little, you know, environment here. Yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we're fighting against. Yeah. Uh, uh, which means we've got to be constantly on the case. We're spending about seven and a half thousand pounds a year maintaining the mural. Right, right. Um, and that's, it is important because if we don't maintain it, it's going to start looking neglected. Yes. If it looks neglected, people are going to come along with spray cans. Right. And suddenly it descends into not a picture, but a disaster area. Yeah, yeah. Now I see some little little signs uh, down here. Yeah. Uh, explain the relevance of those. Well, we had, as I mentioned, four schools involved. Mm -hmm. We also had the Army Welfare Service, who are based at Dreghorn Barracks, and the Pentland Art Club. So we've given credit to each of our contributors. Um, and in fact, those mushrooms, toadstools, I'm not quite sure what they were, uh, yeah. were painted by the kids in the Army Welfare Service. Ah, that is. Those giant foxgloves on the wall were also painted by them. Okay. And we've got photos. There was a beautiful little child yeah. about that high yeah. wearing her mum's T-shirt. And it came down to her feet. Yeah. She had bare feet. And she was walking across yeah. the paint. And in that and in some other pictures further down, yeah. you can actually see these little green footprints. <laughs> and again, you know, we've got the choice. Do we take them away? Yeah, yeah. Do we edit them out or do we keep them? Great thing is when, yeah. when that little girl yeah, yeah. is a mum, yeah. she's going to be bringing her kids along and going, they're my footprints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, talking of yeah. active travel, you see we also have horses. Yes, yes, I have noticed. I actually grew up on a farm with horses right. and cattle and Good. sheep as well, so... Yeah, we used to joke when we were painting that, that, the, <laughs> that the horse riders yeah. could paint the ceiling yeah. for us. Yeah. This is a school panel. This was painted by a high school. Mm -hmm. We gave them free reign. We weren't prescriptive. We didn't do painting by numbers. Right. We said, the line of poetry says, painted stations whistle by. Yeah. Give me a painted station. Yeah. And that's basically what they did. Yeah. This is a primary school. Uh, this is a a line of poetry that says here is a child that clambers and scrambles all on his own and gathering brambles yeah and so that's their field of brambles and really the detail is just so extraordinary in here but what's great is yeah. that it's honest it's yeah. it's not professional artist work yeah that's professional artist work right yeah. there yeah. yeah this is kids work yeah and it's got that integrity right that's important I love the the three dimensional sort of feel to it. With you know the, the some of it is painted right onto the brick itself, and then some is painted onto these other things. So it gives you that depth to it. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Well, that's, that's for several reasons. Um, one is exactly what you've just said. Mm -hmm. It's the 3D effect. It mm -hmm. brings it out. It yeah. you know, makes it stand out. The other thing is, I'm standing here with a drop of water coming down right beside yeah. me. Yeah, right here. We've got uh, pools of water. If you look behind Boom. you, yeah. part of the purpose is that we are diverting water behind right. those sections. So yeah. Right here behind Amelia, yeah, yeah, absolutely um, brilliant. You can see what we've done. Yeah. Instead of the water dripping as it would have done where you are, yeah, it's coming down behind here. Yeah, yeah. And it does. It doesn't completely solve the problem of wetness. Right. Because it's a Victorian railway tunnel. Right, right. But what it does do is help to improve things. And instead of the paint washing off the brick, yeah, it actually stays on the wall. It stays on the wall. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And I just yeah, had a big so. splatter on my head as I said. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it it has you know two real functions. Yeah. It, it it looks really cool, but it also has the function yeah, yeah. of being, you know, a way to get around that uh, moisture problem. Incidentally, talking of green footprints, look at that pink daisy up there. Oh yeah, there it is. Can you see them? There it is. Yeah. And the little boy decided he would copy the girl, and yeah. uh, that's his handprint. <laughs> but again, you know, we could have edited them out. Right. But why? Yeah. Fantastic. But we've had a whole group of very talented people from the age of three to the age of, I think, 97, mm -hmm. all involved. Wow. Really amazing. And then... Uh, oh, now they're ducks. Yeah, Lovely. well, again, this is a great thing. These sort of yeah. spot illustrations yeah. we can pop in. Um, what we're going to be doing, and we haven't done yet, we've got interpretation boards at each end of the tunnel like these. Yeah. But what we plan to do during the summer, as yeah. part of our maintenance, is to put a couple of interpretation boards along the way mm -hmm. that tell some of the stories that I've just been telling you. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, it's a constant process of going out and looking for money to do these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No hint, honestly. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is Robert Louis Stevenson himself. Yes. If you notice, he's in a railway carriage and yeah. he's writing the poem from a railway carriage, which is that poem that we've just <laughs> that, that poem seen that, that runs all the way down the wall. We unveiled that um, at the end of 2021. Yeah. And we brought 180 young people from a whole load of different schools and they all walked through the tunnel reciting the poem at the top of their voices and it was utterly uh -huh. crazy because you've seen the echo in there yeah imagine 180 kids all reciting at the top of their voices yeah it was just unbelievable yeah and then we've got this which is a whole crowd of people waiting for the train that used to run through the tunnel yeah that's what it used to look like it was called the Bologna pug yeah um and we've got all sorts of people in here. We've got our art team up on the left. Mm -hmm. We've got the war poets, Robert Graves, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, okay. who are probably better known in Britain, um, who two of them were stationed or, or were in hospital, in fact, in World War I, mm -hmm. just a mile from here. You've got, uh, you've got me pushing a bike. Oh yeah, there you are. Back in the 70s, a very popular... With a nice hen there in the front basket. <laughs> well, yeah. a very popular meal in the 70s in pubs was chicken in a basket. Ah, uh, chicken Which is in the kind of what that nod is all about. <laughs> a nod to that. <laughs> yeah. And then down here we've got uh, two of Emilia's colleagues at Sastrans. Ah, fabulous. Um, yeah. Mark and Cosmo. Fantastic. Yeah. So, and I mean, we've taken liberties. Yeah. For example, the chap here who looks a bit like a, a used car salesman <laughs> is actually one of our local councillors. Oh, fabulous. Um, and he loved it so much he brought his parents along. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's great because we're able to include lots and lots of real people. Yeah. Uh, and that, again, is about that stakeholder thing. It yeah. keeps people bringing other friends along to visit it and say, come look at my picture. Yeah, but, yeah. So that's me. I'm daft. I love it. I love it. So for for your final word, yep. What would you say to somebody uh, that is just learning about this for the first time? Uh, from your experience, of, you, you you say it was a stupid idea. You say you're daft. It's there. I I don't agree at all. You clearly had the the gumption to making it happen, and you knew 
how to go about it because of your experience. Um, what would you say to, to you know, communities around the globe that you know, see an opportunity sub, such as this? You know, what would be your word of encouragement? I would say go for it. Uh, ignore everybody who tells you you can't do it. Yeah. Uh, because people will tell you you can't do it. Yeah. People will tell you it's too big. Nobody's ever done that. All those things, ignore them. Find like-minded people around you. Go out, find out who can stop you doing it yeah. and deal with them first. And then you've got left the people who can help you to do it. Yeah. And that's the secret of making progress. Then you've got the challenge of getting some money together. These things cost money. Yeah. Um, you've got to be able to communicate your story, communicate your intentions, your dreams, if you like, yeah. uh, to those who will potentially fund you. But the bottom line is a really simple one, and this is about being daft. Mm -hmm. You've got to be so daft that you don't believe you can't do it. Right, yeah, yeah. The back of all of those old yeah. railway trains and giving them back to, to people for walking and cycling, and that's really how. When did this start getting established as a, a, a trail? This specific well, trail yeah. has, uh, the surface that you're seeing here was yeah. upgraded just last year uh, ah. by Sustrans. To, to your point. But the, yeah. the trail itself yeah. was created by two landscape architects mm -hmm. working on behalf of what was then called the City of Edinburgh Council. Mm -hmm. no. no, Edinburgh City Council. Mm -hmm. um, a guy called Ian Temple mm -hmm. and a lady called Charlotte Cottingham. Mm -hmm. And in those days, 1980, we had a lot of kids leaving school without qualifications mm -hmm. uh, at the age of sort of 15, 16. And they used to go on to what was called a YOPS scheme, Youth Opportunity Scheme, mm -hmm. to learn practical skills. Mm -hmm. And part of the purpose of this project was to teach kids landscaping, yeah. bricklaying, path laying, painting. They actually painted the tunnel uh, just in you know, bland colours. Sure. Um, and it was young people under the guidance of these landscape architects who actually built the walkway, right. but it was the landscape architects who had the vision. And I think that's the bit that really wow. made it. And uh, approximately what year was, was that sort of happening with those about guys? About 1980. Okay, about yeah. 1980. Yeah. It was open, sorry, it was opened as a walkway officially in 1980. Okay, yeah. So it would have been in the two or three years preceding that. Sure, sure. Because this goes from Leith, which is where uh, you, you reach the Firth of Forth. Mm -hmm. the, the Water Leith walkway goes literally from Leith all the way up there to Belerno, which is what, five miles further up, four miles yeah. further mm -hmm. up? Yeah. Um, so it's a really extended off-road walkway. Right. Um, and it's, I mean, what it's done is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine in those early days, there was probably still ties and rail line, you know, railway I've got there a picture. Too. Yeah. It's not on the website, yeah. but um, I took it four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just down here mm -hmm. before this new surface went on. Mm -hmm. And you know when aggregate gets packed hard? You're right you could see where the railway sleepers had been if yeah. it rained yeah you'd get horizontal bars where each sleeper had been yeah. because it was more compacted right and it was like the ghost of a railway line exactly it was yeah. unbelievable brilliant yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so great. i used to call it the ghost yeah. train <laughs> yeah and so amelia you were just uh, uh talking about the fact that just last year we got it paved so this must have been a huge initiative uh, from Sustrans to try to get this improved to the point where again it's more accessible for all ages and abilities. That's right and it was very much a, a partnership project so mm -hmm. Sustrans worked in partnership um, with the Edinburgh and Lothian's Green Space Trust and mm -hmm. the Water of Leaf Conservation Trust and we're mm -hmm. going to meet them a little bit later on this morning. Um, coming together really to give us a, a surface that really is accessible for all users so uh, whether you're on foot by bike or if you're in a wheelchair if you're pushing a buggy just really making it a, an inviting and easy to use surface for everyone so um yeah really happy to to see this completed i think it was quite a a, a labor of love um but everybody was really happy to to see it successfully completed last year fantastic is there a website people can go to to learn about there it? is indeed yes www.collinsontunnel.org.uk it's got the whole story there, loads of pictures, loads of things we haven't talked about. Brilliant. Thank you so very much. My this absolute has been pleasure, absolutely John. fun. Yeah. Good. Yay.
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.